cries of someone innocent? Who was behind this twisted plot? I'm sorry. No, that's beyond my ability. I just sensed some complex feelings from it. A mixture of deep sadness and eager anticipation. Rover, I think I know what's going on here. It seems to be begging for help, but it's not asking us to help it. I can sense the pained cries of this tacit discord. No, the cries of this whole village. The village is crying, waiting for rescue. Something truly awful must have happened here. And the victim's reverberations still linger. Based on the evidence we've found and the condition of these ruins, that didn't happen all too long ago. I can still feel it in the streams. Perhaps the tacit field has kept this village from being discovered. Or maybe someone has been intentionally concealing it. There must be something we can do. We may find the victims nearby. I can feel someone connected to what happened here is still close. This place is dangerous. I'll inform Chuzia about what happened here. Can we continue our search before the official investigators arrive? Sorry, I know it doesn't sound very convincing. It's just a hunch of mine, and I don't have any evidence to back it up. Thank you, Rover. Please stay vigilant. As for the little one here, let's leave it be. <laughs> the area is a mess, but it doesn't look like a war zone. Someone was hurt and dragged away. Look, there are many footprints here. These are traces left by a fight. Someone was injured. <laughs> One with the sounds. Ritualistic wooden plaques. But why aren't they here? These plaques are usually placed in ancestral shrines. They seem to belong to a different time. I remember reading about something like this. People held large-scale ancient rituals periodically in their villages, driven by certain beliefs. I see. Let's check somewhere else. These cards... Ah, uh, I see. The Fraxidus is likely behind it all. The Fraxidus? Yes. I don't know much about the Fraxidus, but as an outrider, I've worked on related cases. It's a group of extremists obsessed with fusing humans with tacit discords. They've caused terror attacks of various scales around the world. Fusing humans in tacit discords. We've seen signs of their presence in Jinzhou, left by lower-ranked members called Artificers. Above the Artificers are the Overseers, leaders with eerie abilities and unknown intentions. They pose a far bigger threat. No one knows their true intentions. Some members speak of world destruction, while others claim they seek eternal power. And there is one particularly insane overseer. He's crazy even by Fraxida's standards. A man who sees no order and revels in destruction. 
I've seen similar cards in the physical evidence file of the Fraxidus-related cases. They belong to this one overseer I'm talking about. They call him... Scar. If he's responsible for what happened to these villagers, who knows what kind of cruel and twisted atrocities he's capable of. You won't need my self-introduction. Oh, I spent so much time on it. To hear it from me, then? Yes, I am Scar, cruel and twisted maniac. We deserve a meeting free of such disturbances, don't you agree? The girl, she's gonna sway your judgment. Oh, so you really care about her. Don't worry. I don't plan to make you hate me just yet. She is safe now. Well, let's just enjoy our time together for the moment. Forget about that irrelevant person, will you? I have a lot to share with you. To begin with, I heard you've lost your memories. So, it's true. That makes sense, given how fragile you were when you woke up, or I would have questioned the authenticity of those rumors. So you noticed? Oh, I am flattered. No need to be so on edge. By now, you should have realized I'm just one of the onlookers. But out of all the onlookers, I'm the only one who came forward to meet you with absolute honesty. Before you knew anything about this world, you were already the center of conflict. You are the unknown variable we've been waiting for. Forces have been fighting for possession over you. From the moment you opened your eyes, everyone you've met, including that girl you care so much about, they all knew how valuable you are. The world is a cruel place. You are a living, breathing person, but you're just a pawn to many. That's why I'm here. Because I see you as a dear friend, and I want to tell you the truth. I am so, so sorry for everything you're about to face. But truth hurts sometimes. You could say I'm looking forward to your choice. My goal is simple. I just want to deepen our mutual understanding, nothing more. Come on. Observe the surroundings a little more and tell me what you see. As you learn more about this world, your true desires will surface. And our little game will become even more entertaining. And before that, I don't want anyone to disturb my precious alone time with you. That's all. Ah, oh, 
Why do you have to assume we are the culprits? Maybe you should be asking me what actually happened here. I won't tell you everything just yet. That's too boring. As I said, why don't you go ahead? What do you see? Bravo! Didn't think you'd ca- Now, what is the conclusion you've drawn? How typical. The age-old tale of savage wolves and helpless lambs. Good and evil as clear as day. It's a tired story that people cling to in their mundane lives. Oh, how it keeps them in check. But let me ask you this. Do you truly believe the real world can be that simple? Let me give you a couple more tips. The truth is far more complicated. First, who are the players in our tale? An innocent girl, a revered leader, and a flock of simple villagers. Next, what makes up our main plot? False devotion, fleeting kindness, collective deceit, senseless killings, and the one vulnerable soul pushed onto a path of destruction by the masses. Now, Rover, I'm eager to hear your version after you've learned. One with the sounds. Our story begins here. Once upon a time, in a peaceful village, lived a flock of carefree lambs. In the day, they toiled for food. And when evening fell, they sought refuge from the looming threat of wolves. Fables. Stories told and retold through the ages. The ancient art of conveying hidden truths 
through fiction. But they always draw from real life, don't they? The same story gets told by many, and each person brings their own spin, their own focus. Whatever you learn from it is just one of countless different interpretations, like us now. Caught in a carefully crafted plotline, a scheme I had no hand in. This village marks the beginning of my story with Jinjo. <laughs> so that magistrate led you here to meet me. <sighs> Such a clever move on her part. One with the sounds. One day, a shepherd visited the village. The shepherd brought them promises of abundance and protection. The lambs, drawn in by his words, soon lived in comfort and security. No, nope, quite the opposite. With a wave of his hand, the shepherd could grant their every wish. His flock obeyed bowing their heads, pleading for better food and shelter. They no longer had to struggle for survival, as their once meager lives were replaced with endless luxury. The flock worshipped their shepherd-turned-god, praising him and holding him in the highest regard. What's wrong? Does my story make you imagine you were one of those lambs? facing irresistible temptation and pressure from your peers. Wouldn't you bow down and beg for food from your master? Oh, so we agree already. You are right. But the world we live in falls short of our ideals. The shepherd still reigns, and the lambs have grown complacent. It's up to the two of us to make that ideal world a reality. One with the sounds. <laughs> One with the sounds. The lambs reveled in endless bonfire parties, celebrating their new god every night. Except the one little black lamb. As each night passed, it was the only one to notice how its flock was dwindling away. Rover, do you think someone would give you what you want without taking anything from you? 
<laughs> I once believed that too. Thought as long as I paid a high enough price, I could get my desired outcome. But true equality is scarce. Always has been. The world was never a fair place. Wouldn't you agree? To receive equal retribution, one must give more and more and more. When every wish comes with a hefty price, people weigh their options carefully. When they can make someone else bear the price. They all rush to make more wishes. They don't consider they too may one day pay for another's selfish desire. Funny, isn't it? One with the sounds. Later, the shepherd openly blamed the black lamb for the flock's decline. On the next day, the white lambs welcomed the rising sun as usual, but the black lamb was nowhere to be found. The shepherd introduced an unspoken rule to this village, one that our black lamb violated by telling the truth. Suddenly, the once doting god stopped fulfilling wishes, because no more sacrifices were being made. After witnessing the Black Lamb's actions and hearing from their almighty shepherd, what do you suppose the White Lambs did? Ah, oh, those oblivious lambs. Little did they know the most fearsome demon was right under their noses. I sense your weakness. Well done. You didn't let any details slip. Now, I wonder, what is your takeaway from this story? Answer me and I'll reveal the truth of what happened. Who was the real culprit behind the diminishing number of lambs? Brilliant answer. You saw past the obvious. The true culprit was not the shepherd, but the white lambs who chose to follow his rules. The shepherd never forced them into anything. He merely presented a choice, a possibility. No one would have been killed if they simply refrained from making those wishes. Their greed and indifference were the cause of it all. Now, my second question. What price did the lambs pay for their wishes? But that's why they wanted it in the first place. Why would they trade their wealth for a wish when they were risking their lives for it anyway? Here's my final question. What happened to the black lamb? Ah, 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 ah. Don't rush, Rover. Take your time. What is the truth you've uncovered? The shepherd was granting wishes by sacrificing the lives of lambs. The flock found out the truth but chose to be his accomplices, and they willingly offered the Black Lamb as another sacrifice. <laughs> That's right! Little lambs cowered and huddled in their village, terrified of the relentless wolf packs. 
until a shepherd arrived, bearing the gift of wishes and providing shelter and sustenance. Slowly, the shepherd gained control over the flock, and the lambs lived contented lives. But this is not the end of our story. The shepherd found the solitary black lamb in his flock and offered to grant any wish it desired. In exchange, he wanted one of its companions as a sacrifice. The black lamb refused and it was shunned by its flock, left without shelter or sustenance. After the black lamb's exile, more lambs continued to vanish. The shepherd then blamed the black lamb for breaking the rules and withheld his wish-granting power as punishment. From the very beginning, the lambs knew the risk of making wishes. They too could become sacrifices for those of others. But they always believed it wouldn't be them. Meanwhile, some lambs reasoned that since they had already risked being sacrificed for someone else's wish, it was then only fair to pass on that risk for a chance at fulfilling their own desires. And so they continued to play the game. They all knew the consequences, but chose to remain silent. Fearful, yet greedy, they followed the shepherd's orders and made wishes again and again. Until one day, a brave black lamb spoke up, shattering the flock's facade, their illusion of a peaceful and happy life. Black lamb got in their way, and that of the shepherd's greedy pursuit, sparking hatred in their hearts. Suddenly, they could no longer ignore the blood and ashes of past sacrifices littering the ground. How do you like my story, Rover? What really happened here? I suppose you already have it figured out? The black lamb who rebelled against the rules? and the white lambs who succumbed to their greed, the innocent maiden sacrificed, and the villagers who turned on each other in a ruthless frenzy. They had it coming. All the shepherd had to do was execute the rebel. That's how he kept the flock in check and maintained the status quo. Fun answer, but no, not even close. I was never the shepherd, never will be. You and I, we are the black lamb, the one who breaks the rules. <laughs> Interesting, Rover. <laughs> I'm liking you more and more. Well then. Let's see if this black lamb is going to end up like you say. <laughs> <laughs>